Welcome back to Indianomics. We've been discussing with Dr. Rakesh Mohan, former Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank, Samiran Chakravarti of Citibank, and Anand Ovamik of India Ratings, how they see the macro economy and the banking piece in the year 2016, which is just, of course, a few days away. Well, uh, Dr. Mohan, uh, what's your sense about inflation? Uh, as we s heard from Samiran before the break, uh, there is the pay commission impulses. Uh, uh, there is also uh, the likelihood of fiscal deficit going higher. Uh, do you think there is, uh, if fiscal space is taken, is there monetary space at all? Rate cuts possible? Uh, remember that 2015 was very, very unusual for the global economy as a whole mm. in terms of the very, very steep fall mm. in oil prices and also in all other commodity prices. Mm. Um, the current expectations in the global economy is, are, as far as I can understand, that these commodity prices and oil prices uh, might still fall further, but nowhere near the pace of 2015, mm. very clearly. So in that sense, um, the reduction, that, that the expectation of inflation coming down very much uh, in the coming year are probably not very high. Okay. Uh, second point I would make as a, in, as, as a conceptual issue that is, I think, arising for most monetary policy makers in the world is that as a consequence of the commodity price fall and the oil price fall, mm. uh, the prices of goods in the world have really come down. So it's not just in India mm. that there's a large wedge between the producer price index and the CPI and the consumer price index. And, and in, in many parts of the world, indeed including the United States, there is a difference of 4-5% between the two. Mm. So uh, I do feel that uh, uh, central banks all around the world, including ours, will have to increasingly face what to do with inflation targeting when there's such a large wedge between the producer price indices and the consumer price indices, whose inflation expectations are we working on mm -hmm. uh, when we look at this? And second, that um, um, if, if we keep looking, if, 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 if the CPI continues to be much higher than PPI around the world, including in India, and the, and, the, and the inflation targeting is essentially focused on CPI, it really does mean that the real interest rate for producers, goods producers, is much higher, yes. um, as opposed to service producers. So uh, that will indeed have a dampening effect on investment and growth around the world, including in our country. That's an interesting theoretical problem and a practical problem for uh, central bankers, for sure. But uh, beyond the scope of this discussion, I, actually, we'll also run out of time. Uh, Samiran, very quickly, yes. what are you expecting by way of rate cuts? Well, our sense is that we could get uh, maximum one uh, or two rate cuts in 2016, uh, primarily because... Uh, we expect that at least in the first half of 2016, commodity prices to stay uh, low. And uh, that would probably uh, be a situation where RBI could undershoot the 5.8% March 2016 uh, inflation forecast. And if that happens, along with a somewhat tighter uh, budget in February, mm. then that opens up some scope for uh, monetary easing. Having said that, we are worried of four event risks on inflation in 2016. Mm. Uh, one is uh, arising out of uh, the HRA component of the pay commission. Yeah. Uh, second is uh, from uh, the adverse El Nino effects, which is still continuing. Uh, third is from a possible uh, hike in tax rates to manage the fiscal. And fourth is purely from the base effect of, of commodity price declines in 2015 uh, running away in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we will be watching from an inflation risk perspective. Okay, but whether it is a question of uh, rate, uh, uh, base rates coming down or investment picking up. I think Anandu Bhavik uh, is the person who is going to uh, tell us how the banking system will grapple it. Uh, Anandu, uh, do you think that the banking system will be any better able to pass on the rate cuts uh, considering the amount they will have to provide for bad loans? Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be a challenge, obviously. PNL is expected to be under pressure, uh, not just next year, but in the foreseeable future. Uh, but uh, the changes that have uh, been happening in uh, the recent years, A, in terms of 
uh, banks having get greater flexibility to raise longer tenor bonds and thereby uh, reducing their refinancing risk. And then the recent uh, guidelines of RBI on the marginal uh, cost of lending. Yeah. I think uh, these should uh, improve the transmission ability. Historically, I think banks had passed on anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of uh, during a reduction cycle. Uh, that could uh, increase now to 60 to 70 percent. So I think uh, their uh, maneuverability has improved. Whether they want to wish to do that uh, for survival reasons is another question. But uh, Anand, though, uh, actually Samiran kicked off the conversation itself by saying that uh, one of the problems to growth will be deleveraging corporate India and to some extent de-bottlenecking the balance sheets of banks. Uh, what's your sense? Uh, uh, the Reserve Bank's financial stability report uh, very clearly indicated there's a huge problem of leverage with uh, at least 100 top corporates and uh, that's blocking at least uh, 15 to 20 banks from doing any lending. What's your sense? Uh, will corporate India be any better uh, and thereby give banks some chance to uh, improve their balance sheets? The good news is that uh, currently the working capital expansion has halted. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because commodity cycles have fallen and so therefore your inventory amounts have reduced. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the requirement for working capital debt has actually fallen. And so therefore the leverage uh, build up has sort of plateaued out. Uh, but having said that, I think the stickiness of uh, EBITDA cash flow generation to be able to service debt, I think that's going to remain a problem. Uh, I think the uh, corporate uh, issue, the stickiness of uh, distressed assets would remain. Uh, would that mean that it would clog up banks' lending capacity? For sure. I mean, uh, these are also relatively higher risk-weighted assets, and so therefore banks would be extremely reluctant to uh, extend themselves further on corporate, uh, to corporate lending. Uh, could that be a party pooper as far as GDP growth is concerned? Well, the, uh, the argument is that other entities, non-banks, would sort of step in. Uh, markets have been very accommodative. Equity markets have been very uh, supportive. Uh, funding uh, would need to be, uh, uh, could be a challenge. Uh, we need to figure out how uh, that mechanism, mechanism works through. But for all practical purposes, we are seeing a fall of the PSU Bank's market share from current 70% to anywhere 50 to 60% over the next five years. So, what, how, what about the state of the banking system itself, Anandu? Uh, the Reserve Bank's financial stability report again uh, uh, expects uh, just the GNPA, uh, which is only part of the stressed assets, to go to 5.4% in March from uh, the September's level of 5.1% of the total book. Uh, stressed assets, of course, will go up uh, uh, at least commensurate, uh, probably to 12%. Uh, what's your sense? Will FI17 see any relief in terms of stressed assets? Will they be at least lower in terms of a percentage of the book? I think uh, the uh, increments are coming down. Uh, there's been some cyclical pickup, construction uh, equipment, uh, some of the uh, freight movements are picking up and to that extent there's more cash uh, with the borrowers uh, and uh, on the cyclical side uh, there could be some relief uh, but in sectors such as iron and steel uh, where commodity cycle is expected to remain weak uh, in some pockets of infrastructure other than roads because roads again some of the EPCs are coming in and so therefore there's more cash mm. so other than roads for some of the other infrastructure sectors I think the uh, problem of over leverage would remain could it mean uh, lower credit cost I doubt uh, I think uh, the incremental assets that banks are pumping out on the retail side should hold but on the corporate side the challenge is that I, we feel the banks are under provided so while from an accounting uh, side there could be some relief but it would only be temporary because end of the day in a couple of years those provisions would need to be taken. So we don't see much any relief on the credit cost side at all. Okay. Time permitting, I'll come back to the uh, banking system with Dr. Mohan. Uh, but Dr. Mohan, there are two institutions that may crop up in 2016 and before we run out of time, I want your comment on that. Do you see the MPC coming into being and that uh, dramatically changing uh, uh, the way in which monetary policy will be conducted? Um, the, uh, I, I don't think that the uh, coming into being of the MPC or not would make that much difference to uh, the outcome of monetary policy in the coming year or later. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have good enough experience of monetary policy committees around the world, uh, certainly the UK, ECB, um, uh, United States, 
uh, and other countries that the MPCs have not really behaved very differently uh, from uh, what, uh, what what the governors uh, would would like, okay. um, and, and of course has done that persuasion rather than any force, of course. So I I think that that I, I don't I don't see much difference in monetary policy making as a consequence of the MPC. And do you expect the public debt uh, uh, agency to come up, the independent debt office to come up, and will that be a source of uh, uh, instability in the markets uh, uh, in 2016? Yes, well, I, uh, I remain uh, skeptic of uh, setting up the independent debt management agency. Uh, to my mind, uh, saying that there would be a debt management agency that is independent um, doesn't make any sense. I don't know anywhere in the world where the debt management agency is independent because a key sovereign function is issuance of debt. So how can there be an independent debt management agency? Okay. So I continue to believe that uh, this is a, re a so-called reform uh, that is misinformed. Okay. Um, and I would say that it should, I would still say it should not be done, even though I suppose there's now agreement that it will be done. Okay. Well, actually, we've completely run out of time. Uh, Dr. Mohan, Samiran Chakrabarti, Anandu Bhamik, thank you very much for joining me in this uh, uh, very enlightening conversation. Uh, our experts believe growth may be slightly better. Inflation will still be around the same level or uh, 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 around the 5.5% mark. Don't expect too much by way of rate cuts. And most importantly, the uh, banking piece is unlikely be, to be too much better or maybe even a little worse uh, in terms of uh, amounts it has to provide for bad loans. So 2016, uh, from this point of view, doesn't look uh, like a very bright year. But of course, we will look out for surprises. Thank you very much for joining me in this edition of Indianopolis.